There are many concerns. Fuel is, um, is high among them. The big one, though, has to be power. And, of course, that severe thunderstorm watch for this afternoon about the ranges. Uh, I'm going to speak now to local MP and Police Minister, Forestry Minister, Economic Development Minister Stuart Nash. Morena, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Ryan? Yeah, I'm well. How are you doing? Uh, well, it's really unusual circumstances, right? Because even in disasters, we're used to having power and comms. And so people can't be directed to, to websites to find out latest information. So, you know, we're doing the best we can. That's why you guys are doing such an awesome job. So what we're saying is, you know, watch the AM show, but also um, the Breeze radio stations doing a really good job, a local radio station, and getting information out there. So if people have got transistor radios, that's the way. We're hearing from a lot of people that they don't have bank cards. A lot of people here don't have bank cards, mm. even if they wanted to get cash out, mm. and there's nowhere to get cash out. Dairies need cash to buy food. Mm -hmm. People are starting to get really worried about this. It's day three now. So power is the most important thing. Of that, there's no doubt. Um, Megan Woods, who I've been speaking to regularly, gets updates at 10 a.m. and 1.30, so obviously the next update is coming very soon. Uh, but getting power back on is critical for a whole raft of reasons. You know, you just heard from a local businessman here. I mean, th this was supposed to be the biggest weekend in Hawke's Bay for the year, right? Art Deco weekend. And so you've got a whole lot of businesses that have really geared up. Mate, it is really, really tough times for these guys. And so, you know, the power is critical. If we can get power back on, then businesses can start operating again. If we can't, then talking to Napier City Council about setting up some form of business hub where people can come down, they can charge their phones, they can get Wi-Fi, and they can start doing some form of transactional processes in the first place. Yeah, because we've heard from the Regional Council this morning that it could be weeks before that substation is fixed. It could be weeks before there's power back to Napier, 37,000 residents mm -hmm. without it. I mean, that... That's a crisis, isn't it? Yeah, that, I mean, I, I would. That sounds a little alarmist. We will know more at 10 a.m. And keeping in mind, there's a whole lot of guys that have come up from the South Island to sort this out. This is critical. The government knows it's critical. Transpower knows it's critical. It is their number one priority to get power back on. Because, of course, you know, we're, we're living in the 21st century, right? Food is kept in fridges and freezers. Uh, we all operate on a power grid. And without that, it's very hard to, to undertake any form of commerce. So, so you think, you think weeks, is, weeks is over the top? Would you say days before Napier's back on the grid? We'll know more at 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, but, but I think weeks is over the top, knowing how, um, how urgent and important this is for Transpower okay. to get us sorted. You're obviously police minister as well, and, and I'm sure you've been receiving briefings on, on the situation, that the tragedy um, that now five people have lost their lives because of this, um, this awful weather event. Um, the, the child yesterday in Eskdale, a, a lot of people here, um, you know, were just a real um, punch to the face that was mm. um, for them to hear about that because mm. they've been so worried about hearing news like that. Yeah. It must be hard. It's an absolute tra tragedy and there are some parts of the region that have been absolutely slammed. And so, you know, police, uh, the, the district commander uh, has done a fantastic job around mobilising police from outside the district in here. And so we are seeing a lot, a much greater police presence in the bay, um, but also, you know, uh, it, it could be, it could be more. Um, do you have any idea how many, we know how many are, are un, uncontactable, mm -hmm. but do you know how many are, are unaccounted for, how many police are, are worried about? Uh, at this stage it's very, very difficult to tell because of course there are people phoning in saying I can't get hold of my mother or my, my relative, my father, 97 year old mother, you heard that story before. It could just be because they just, you know, they just haven't got any way to contact them because as mentioned no comms, no power, so it's the ones in places like East Valley that we're really, really worried about. Do you know what's happening with um, Defence Force support for Napier in particular? The um, Mayor earlier said that there was potentially help on the way today. Yeah, um, Andrew Little's providing me an update a little bit later on. Uh, again, he recognised that we will need the Defence Force in here, so everything's being mobilised. Basically what's happened is the Prime Minister, Chris Hipkins, has said whatever Napier, whatever Hawke's Bay needs, Hawke's Bay will get. So that message has gone out loud and clear. What I've been doing in the last couple of days is working very closely with the Napier City Council to say, OK, Let's put down everything we absolutely need to ensure that the people of Napier can get through this. And, uh, and Chris and Kieran McAnulty have done their absolute best to deliver on that. What about the slash? Obviously, as Forestry Minister, there was um, a lot of anger, um, particularly around Tolaga Bay. One mm. farmer in particular said her farm is pretty much carnage because of the slash that's coming down. Mm. And she says, you need to go there within the next week and visit it and see it for yourself. Will you do that? I'm uh, very keen to do that. So I was there um, the 1st of February after the initial storm that came through at the beginning of the year and had a look at this. I mean, 
Look, uh, Gisborne has a high, very high percentage of highly erodible soils. So we've been very clear we're going to do an inquiry into best land use practice on highly erodible soils in the Tairawhiti district. I still believe that forestry is the answer, but the question is what is the management regime required to best protect A, um, uh, the local hillsides, B, make sure that we're not seeing the slash come down every single time there's a rain event, but also keeping in mind the first event brought down a whole lot of native trees, mm. brought down a whole lot of mature trees, so when you get this uh, this level of rain, you are going to get trees washed out of hillsides. It's, it's the, well, this farmer though, I mean, an inquiry, yes, I understand it, it needs to happen, but, but in the meantime, uh, who's going to pay to clean up her farm? Well, in, out of inquiries will come recommendations, and, you know, I, I heard someone interviewed saying nothing has changed since the big event of 2000. 18. That simply isn't true. There's been a whole lot of forest that have been retired. So you've got two different types of forest at the moment. In essence, plantation forest. You've got your uh, plantation, which are for harvested, and you've got your permanent forest. And those are forests that will never be harvested for a whole raft of reasons, OK? So it's looking at best mix of management regime on the right soils, in the right place. Forestry companies are well aware of this, uh, communities are well aware of this, but, but you know, I still believe that forestry is the answer. We've just m got to make sure we get the right tree, right place, whether make it's sure indigenous. It's, it's better managed. Um, just before you go, how worried are you about the weather? We're hearing about a severe thunderstorm watch uh, for the ranges yeah. above um, Hawke's Bay, already obviously very sodden. How worried are you about that? Far, far from ideal. I am concerned. Um, I have a meeting at, at 10.30 with... Um, all the, the control ahead, so we'll, we'll take a look at this. The big concern, of course, is rain drops in the hills and it takes about eight hours to come down the rivers. That's right. Uh, the, the regional council did a fantastic job yesterday of, of blocking um, a breach in the stock banks. If, that, if they hadn't been able to fix that, then we would have been looking at mass evacuations in areas where, thank goodness, they're dry at the moment. We've just got to make sure that the integrity of those stock banks holds and, uh, and the water goes out to, to sea and not into the suburb. So, obviously concerned, um, but the regional council Council, man, they're doing a fantastic job. Just before you go, how are you? How's your family doing? You're, everything okay? Your, your house is okay? Yeah, thanks very much. No, we're fine. But compared to people in here and a hell of a lot of other people, um, you know, uh, look, we're, we're Hawke's Bay, okay? We're resilient. We've got a good group of people here who have always come through the worst of it, and we will again. Um, but what I would say, um, you know, obviously people aren't watching this if they haven't got power, but we've got a whole lot of people in this evacuation centre. Non-perishable food is fantastic. Blankets, all this sort of stuff would be fantastic to, to just help out here. But, um, you know, we're not through this yet. We've got to get that power on. We've got to get comms restored and we've got to get commerce happening and people back into the houses. But, but it'll be a while before this is cleaned up. There's no doubt about that. Minister, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Nice to see you. That was uh, Stuart Nash, uh, Senior Government Minister, obviously, also local MP here.